We're studying, uh, we're shaking, shaking on their bowels. Here we are in his office. We are studying a book called Bahjat al Muhafid, a book in Sirat al Nabawiyah. It's a book on the, bi the, bi the biography of the Prophet. So we get to a point where it says, uh, Abu al Muttalib, he was living, he actually grew up in Medina to Manawara. At the time, it was entitled something else. He, on the way back, his uncle came and said, you're, you're a Sharif and you need to come and take your place as the leader of the Quraysh. He brings him back and he's telling behind him, right? So they said they named him Abdul Muttalib, that he thought he was the slave of Muttalib, mm -hmm. right? And it says that, and two reasons, one was because he was trolling behind him, so they assumed this must be a slave, and the other reason is because he had dark skin. I said, I can't wait to tell my people this. They'll be so happy that the prophet had black people in his family, right? And he took my, he said, don't do that. He said, only people with a weak intellect constantly talk about race. race. Constantly, so what he's doing is removing these things that are bothered, these things that have no place in the religion. What that, all right, this is mentioned the race. This country is particularly built on racism, yeah, it so is. It's not hard to, I mean, it's not as easy as they would think to get around that issue. And, and, and I agree, I agree, I agree. But the, the, the key issue for the Tulab is that we don't, for the students of Habib Ammar, we don't deal with it. Not that we cower from it or we're, we don't see the issues, but the real issue is, de is dwelling in something bottle and, and, and what you're doing is, in reality... What about the fact of injustice being committed against a particular yeah, race? Yeah, and, and we deal with Islam, the Sharia deals with that, and it has its place. But the point is that we deal with Al-Haq. Ma mm -hmm. Al-Haq? Allah. We deal with Allah. Mm -hmm. We deal with Al-Haq. We don't deal with al -Batil. We don't deal with that which is, has no significance. The awliya teachers constantly focus on Allah. You keep focusing on Allah Ta'ala until you arrive, right? There is, listen, what's happening is a shame. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm not, listen, I was in the streets. I sold drugs. I got pulled over by the, at the time. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is not to cut you off. No, fuck the fuck. But this is what happens sometimes. Your teacher, something happened over such as Kashmir. Mm. The teachers is over in Kashmir. They tell you that, right? Mm. Something happened in Kashmir. Can mm. you help us with money here? Mm. What about my people here that are suffering through the same injustice no, that I'm... you suffer from? But you told me, don't worry about that. But now you need a. You no. asking me to help. Yeah, you. I don't think the Aliyah actually say that. I don't think, or the Ulama actually say that. Because there is a time and a place for that. And giving aid to somebody is, that's something different. Versus saying that, for example, you have people with everything I see on social media is white supremacy. This shake supports white supremacy. This shake is not outspoken about the African American issues. And it's like, yo, that has its place, but if that's all you want to talk about, that's the trick of the shake on. Yeah. That all you talk about is white people, there's white people that, oh, this shake is white, that's why he do that. Come on, I, like, I mean, people say things about Sheikh Hamza and it's like, this dude established so much to make it possible for people like me to go overseas and study. And I'm being real. No, he was studying with the Habaib when we was running around with guns. I, seriously, like I'm, uh, he really opened a lot of things up. And people, you think that can happen from what? From 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 himself? No, from Baraka. Yeah. All right. From thank, Kabul, Billah. The, the issue. Uh, about, I'm saying all he had to do was say sorry. That's the only thing yeah. with that. That's yeah. you know I mean, he yeah, could have just said sorry. And, and I agree. It doesn't erase everything he did before. I love Sheikh Hamza. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. No, but no. he just could have been like. Yeah, I, I, I must vote. Yeah. I effed that up, man. Yeah, okay. the, the reason why <laughs> I agree with what CJ said is because him of all people being an American should know the things yeah, that yeah. goes on and how tensions. Yeah, but you also got to understand. You remember when I came in and CJ was like, what's this book? That dude is um, even more disconnected than me. Sheikh Hamza isn't connected how we, like we think just because he lives in America, that dude ain't connected. He spent a lot of time back and forth overseas. He's talking to Sheikh Abdullah. He is dealing with issues that are so above us. He's really trying to establish like an Islamic community in America on a higher level, yeah. right? So when I say he's not even really, and people are like, oh, you're making it. Just, no, it's real. Because I'm from America. I talk to my homies every day. And I'm still disconnected. Yeah. Sheikh Hamza is even more disconnected than me, and I'm an African American, so I'm getting uh, news clips sent to my phone. I'm getting it. Sheikh Hamza is not around African Americans like that. You know, his whole school is Pakistani almost. That's why I said to you that when you come back 
how is you going to present that? Because yeah. it's already a disconnect. You've been gone for so long. So you don't yeah. wanna, I mean, you know something. Yeah, I'm going to be real with you. It was uh, one year, the year Ibn Ali came to to Tareem. I was in Oman. I was with my son, right? We had a vacation in Oman, and I had to get their passports removed. And Ib came through, and Ib, when he seen me, it's like, my nigga! He picked me up, and I was like, oh my God, I'm not used to it. Because I'm going to ask every day. I ain't been around my people in so long. It took me like... You're Uncle Tom now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He's going, oh my God, this guy's a nigger. Uh, he's serious. <laughs> Yo, but what do I know? It was like, a cold, because I'm used to being an Arab, so I'm like, you know what I mean? They mad, cool, you know what I'm saying? But I haven't been around. My people only took a few hours to snap back, but... When you ain't been around inner city, I like you. I'm not used to it. My whole square, everybody in Tareem. Ain't no other black people in Tareem. I'm. I've been the, the reason I'm, why I said that is because right, you'll come back in no. and you used to a certain way of living. So everybody working and stuff like that. You like yo, y'all gotta come for to hug you. They like, yeah. hey, bro, I gotta work at five in the yeah. morning. You lost your mind. No, but the, no, but that's the so, thing is that the Tahajit, Listen, if you got four or five people. And you and that Tahajah making dua. People don't understand that. It's not It's not like a oh, you mean microwave. Like a part of, part of dua, I ain't a part of you. You talking about No, what I'm saying is like, it's not going to happen overnight. But if you got four people like, yo, Nuh back, I'm going to try and take some benefit from him, right? Mm -hmm. I, I want to go through whatever it is that he's doing. Even if you're just teaching, Allah's bad to Khalas, I'm going, right? And then, but you really connect to those four or five people. And you start explaining like the things that I received from Habib on how to work. In my community, he never told me do molid. He never told me go home and start teaching this. Thing. He just told me be nice to people, like feed people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if we doing a tahajid and we having pizza and all of that, some when I was in Atlanta, I don't. I mean, I don't really believe that. You know why? Because I believe with baraka. I believe if it's nabawi, if it's prophetic, people will be attracted to it. Mm -hmm. I, I was in Atlanta last time. Last time I was home, I, we invited all the main drug dealers from the A to my man Suleiman Yassin's house, right? Mm -hmm. And we had breakfast, I didn't say anything about the woman. You know what I mean? One of the dudes had a gun on him, right? And he was like, I can't get comfortable. He was like, nigga, just take the gun and put it on the couch. Uh -huh. He, after that, he was so comfortable. I, he just, and then after we prayed Bohar, he was like, no, can you just say a few words? I didn't say y'all need to stop selling drugs. Mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, I lost one with the other. He is merciful. He'll forgive us for any sins. You know, we should try to make Toba as much as mm -hmm. we can. Boom, Never came back anybody. And after that, went back to normal. To the point that we went in the car and I asked him, I said, like, what's that, a nine? And I asked him, I think, I forgot what I asked him. He said, he took the gun out and put it in my hand. It was like, no, nah, this is a Glock, boom, boom, boom. If somebody put a gun in your hand, what the, I don't, it's the first day I met this dude, what that mean? Yeah. And we from the street, that right. mean, yeah. I could have, you know, trust he, he trusts trust me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we on our way back, he goes, he goes, uh, you know, can you uh, come to the trap house? That's a few brothers who embrace the slam. I think they can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. So I believe that if you do it, if it's barakah, if it's prophetic, and you, we know our people. Mm -hmm. If I had came and said like, y'all gotta really stop selling drugs. Mm -hmm. This isn't gonna work for you. No, I just was cool with them. I even told them, use the N word. Nigga, put the gun on the couch. You know what I'm saying? Like because I, you, we know that if we, even if we wasn't in that life, we understand that life. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's not like everyone, the first year I come home, we wanna have a thousand people. No, it's really gonna take some time. It's really, and what we really need, we need people like YouTube, what y'all are doing. Because when you get that one dude that come in here and ask CJ like, yo, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna learn Arabic. I'm my man, no, I'm putting on, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's exactly, it just. Look, I, I'll tell you what happened with us, right? So, since we've been doing this, we had, um, yeah. uh, really died. No, died. It's cool. I got this one, right? But since we've been doing this, I don't know about him, but I just know for me, had two people on Instagram took Shahada. Wow. Had yeah, okay. one girl that was here, she took Shahada. Yeah. One of his friends took Shahada. Yeah. One of my friends. He just yeah. Like now here's the thing, right? This is not for Muslims. No. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. what happens, right? Like, like they be getting on me in the comments and stuff, and they be like, "Yeah, how come you ain't yeah. say this?" And then you and I be like, "Yo, this not a thing. For, this is a barbershop. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this not for Muslims. We like, 
It's not not for Muslims, yeah, but yeah, it's not yeah. catering for. It's not, not It's yeah, just yeah, happened. Yeah. I'm Muslim and he's Muslim, so yeah. this will be be chopping up. Yeah. Like my man in the cup right here, he Muslim. Yeah, but he is. He don't really practice the same. My man out there just came from prison. Okay, and then the rest of them they not Muslim. So yeah. we all different faiths and stuff, and um. The customers come in here and they talk about stuff. Now yeah. we did one, we did one video with this group. It's a women's group called Women Over Wine, mm -hmm. right? And so they Women was over wine. Yeah, there was called Women Over Wine. That was the one when I asked the girl about um, had they ever dated Muslim men? Mm -hmm. Those three women. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. they started giving their you know That's perspectives that. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they they got mad as hell about the video. Oh, why you why you do that? And why are they ripping Muslim? I say, they're not ripping Muslim, man. It just gives you, they give the experience, yeah, and you, you should be able to reflect on yeah, it, right. right? Now, they got mad at us because their group came. They ain't know, they brought some wine with them, right? Mm. So I didn't say, yo, you can't drink that. I don't drink. Ain't no, it don't make yeah. me feel no kind of way. Mm. But on camera, they was drinking, so all in the comments, like, oh, she got the bottle of Henny. Y'all just letting her. I said, what am I supposed to tell her? Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And this ain't the yeah. master. You this is the barbershop. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. Listen, I remember, like, three years in a row in Tarun, I needed to talk to Habib. And I know it was from Allah. Every time I went, every year they have a gathering with the uh, with the tribes. Mm -hmm. And these are, they, like, the, 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 the tribes are Bedouins. Like, they, like, dudes from the hood. Mm -hmm. They come to Habib's house with an AR, AK on them. We and it's at the, when you in a gathering, you don't, you know, you come in, you try to sit down because you come in late anyway. They come in the middle, Assalamu alaikum. Walk up to Habib, shake his hand. I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, this is no, like, you know what I'm saying? But what I learned from that, and how was Habib with them? And he's the, you know, he's a scholar. Wa alaikum assalam. Wallah ladin. He went just, he's like, wa alaikum assalam. He knows exactly how to do what people yeah. want. When I went in the trap house, the dude smoking weed, he went like this. He said, all right, it's cool. I'm not going to blow your high. Finish what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Come mm -hmm. in the room. Yeah. Because if I had been like, you got to put it out. I, would, I, would, I, would I have reached him? You know what I'm saying? Nah. No. But see, here's the thing. Out of them girls, the girls that came and they was drinking, one of them took Shahada. Yeah. Yeah. She took a Shahada in Ramadan. That's I'm true, trying, to, trying to get her to come back and I talk think, about it. I think it. the hardest thing for Muslims to understand. It's crazy how excited people get when people become Muslim, mm. but then they don't they don't see how that process begins. Mm. Right? Mm. So if you like you said, if you come in, you're telling them what to do, mm -hmm. what not to do, that just turns them off. Like who are you? You're not my dad. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well I don't drink. Well I do drink. Yeah. Right? You're not even gonna reach them. And I think that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And if you believe in the law, then you know this is not you anyway. Mm. You can't convince somebody. Yeah, it ain't on you. Not you. Nobody. Mm. No matter what you say, no matter how articulate you are or how unarticulate you are, there's nothing you can say that's going to make somebody become Muslim. That's from Allah. Mm -mm. So that, if you yeah? have the intention, like, exactly. how I deal with you, I'm, I'm intending that through that, Allah touches your heart with, with Deen. That's all it's about. Because yeah. really, if she's drinking, she's not Muslim. So it's yeah. not I'll I, I tell, tell you this, right? And, I mean, I ain't saying this to be exposed and sins or nothing, right? But even when I've dealt with chicks, back in the day and I ain't had no business dealing with them. Even if I'm wrong in doing that, when I was praying, fasting and everything, they always end up taking shot at And not because I'll be making them. Yeah. It would be because they, if they around you, it's gonna rub off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'll be trying to tell them. Like, yo, you don't you don't control that. The law controls yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you, of course you make toba for whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. but you don't stop doing what you're doing. Like, Cause you're yeah. doing something haram. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You keep doing your thing. Yeah, you're doing yeah. I'm not gonna pray. Yeah, I'm yeah, still gonna yeah. pray. That's trick or treat sound like you can't pray. Exactly. You know saying, mm -hmm. Right. So, but most people they see Muslims, they don't see the worship part. They see the rules. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All they so see is the rules. It's a religion yeah. of what you can't do, not a religion of religion, a religion of worship. Some a, 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 a current Muslim told me before they became Muslim, I didn't want to be what I thought Islam was. Mm -hmm. But when mm -hmm. I met a Muslim that prayed five times a day and fasted, and I'm like, oh, okay, because what I knew about Muslims was women covered, couldn't do this, y'all couldn't mm -hmm. do that. Yeah, it's a I bunch never of rules. Saw mm. Worship. I never saw what Islam was. So mm -hmm. And even past that, we expect everybody to be like, think about how, like, this is the Sir brother right here, right? Mm -hmm. He teaches Sir classes, right? How did the Prophet Salaam taught Tawheed? For what, 13 years? Mm -hmm. And then, even when the, the 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 rules were revealed, it was in stages. 
What did Allah say first about drinking? Did he say stop drinking? Mm -hmm. No, he said don't come to the prayer drunk. No. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like you, you gotta give people, you gotta take them through a process. Yeah, like ain't time to go, man. Of, uh, yeah. worshiping idols. Yeah. Now let's work on your behavior. Right? Yeah. Your heart is clear, let's work on your behavior now. But we expect people to become Muslim like yeah. overnight. You gotta yeah. learn all this stuff. How much pressure is that on somebody? Yeah. Especially somebody, let's say you got a family that's a tight knit family. Where you leaving the religion is gonna be something that's gonna be hard for them to take. Mm -hmm. They already got pressure from that end. Why do they need pressure from the other end? Like you gotta do everything right now. Or you're not good enough. That's when that's giving them a way, that's giving Shaitan, I'll say, mm -hmm. a way to pull them out. Like, see, this mm -hmm. ain't all you thought it was. Come back. It's crazy, man. But I think that's like you said, it's about having the right intention. Right? Mm -hmm. This is not your it's not my religion. Yeah. Not, it's not my rules that you're violating, right? This is Allah's religion, and I'm trying to bring you to Allah, and now once you get there, it's between you and Allah, right? I'm here to help you, but it's between you and Allah. This is what you got to do, but you know what I'm saying? Well, man, she, she yeah, now, nah, right? We got a real, like a real soft spot for New Shahada because we know what it was like. So initially, in the initial phases of when we both accepted Islam, and I, I, I always get upset like that when people just like her. You accept Islam, here go to Kufi, they go to book, and then that's it. Yeah. They just left up to their own whims. Yeah, yeah. But if you leave them up to their own whims, they going to get all, they going to go right, right back to the Yeah, they got nothing else to do. Yeah. Like, that's you, not you, the Sunnah. The Sunnah yeah. was Muakha. To make someone Akhi. Mm. On the whole yeah. Medani period, he would always put somebody with somebody else. Mm. So he always did it. He always paired a Muhajir with an Ansar. Right. Everybody. When, who accepted Islam. Even the man that came to try to kill him, uh, Umair ibn Wahab, he made a deal with Safwan ibn Umayyah that he would kill the Prophet or something. And when he, he didn't get to that point, he said, let his son go and teach him Islam. Mm -hmm. He appointed somebody to him. But I, that's to me, that's like a forgotten soon. Yeah, mm -hmm. We just give him shahad. And then that's it. That's right. Come to the matches on Friday, and that's it. You get your shahada and leave him alone. That's yeah, right. I don't like that. Yeah. Man. I, I, that's something that I really don't like because I know how it affected me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 you gotta be patient with people anyway because you don't know. Even if they do fall off, they might come back. You know yeah. what I mean? My, my, my cousin, my cousin took shahada here like four years ago, right? He came here drunk as a skunk one night, <laughs> like totally drunk. And he's a man. I gotta stop drinking. I gotta stop doing this. I, I want to take my shahada. So I gave it to him. And then I, I called Hanif and I asked him, I said, yo, is this still valid? And he said, yo, it's valid. Just call him the next morning to make sure that he remembered. Yeah. So I called him the next morning. He remembered. He good. And now since then, he might, I don't know if he pray regularly, if he, but he going to work on it. He going to do the yeah, best he can. Stuff, yeah. yeah. And it's like, that's how it's something. I'm like, yo, they, they be, especially the women, they always be like, yeah, I got to get myself together first. Mm -hmm. Like, would you... Yeah. You, you you might die in the meantime. You know what I'm saying? But they get that crap from watching other people and listening to what other people be saying. It's like I think it's also a trick of shit time. Like he just yeah. mm. he Muslim do right. Yeah. Mm. Like I'm gonna I'm start praying when I'm a little older, or like when this situation's done with, then I'm gonna go back yeah. to my thing. Like, mm. You don't got because at the time that, that's a trick. Especially when you're younger, mm. you got all the time. Bro, yeah, like, I got no time. time to do it. Yeah. I hate people say I get myself together first. Like what you going? You just start, man. Like I said this this religion Islam is not for perfect people. Right. And I, I know what you said is true. Like you gotta be patient because uh, even like the, the other four of my dads, you might want to need for Rahmatullah. Yeah, his neighbor was a drunker. Mm. You know that his neighbor used to drink, and when he used to drink, right, he used to say things. This is a young man. This is a teenager. You can tell how he was talking. If you read about it in his biography. And he used to say things like, they uh, they forgotten me. Society forgotten me. Nobody wants me. Hmm. Nobody loves me and stuff like that. And so, Imam Abu used to have to hear this every night. <laughs> his drunken neighbor. So one night he didn't hear it. So he said, maybe he drunk himself to sleep. So he went the next, the next night, he still didn't see him. So he found out that he was locked up. They had him locked up because he had owed a lot of people money. So he went to the country for and he, you know, he said, where is my neighbor? And he said, my neighbor, uh, he said, your neighbor owed people money. He said, well, how much do you owe? He said, you owe 85,000 dirhams. 
So you mind my boy, he forgot the 85 there, man. Paid him, he said, where he's at? He said, he's in that prison. Took him, got him out, and he said, the man, look, <laughs> he said, uh, why would you do something like that? He said, have they, have we forgotten you? <laughs> have we abandoned you? Don't you know that became his top student? One of his top students, not Jaffa, Zufar, because Zufar was one of his top students, and then Hassan uh, Shaibani, and y'all know how we used to. Yeah. And that's how they were. They was that patient with people. And this is But that's so hard. We were like, they were like, well, so he was like, I'm the left. I lost that guy away from me. Yeah. He's locked up now. Yeah, that's how we were. <laughs> I got to hear, hear him screaming every night. It's a heart that understands mercy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a heart that understands mercy. That's that's true. Like, we don't have we don't have no mercy like that. Mm-hmm. We don't have no mercy for each other at all. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't you can't make mistakes in the. Once we see even the imam, if a man if the imam commits a blunder, we ready to just chop him down and forget that like, yeah. man. He, oh, he made a mistake. So my luck. I remember Sahir was with one of his homies and uh, dude drove by the car on a bike and smacked his his um. Sabi mirror. He was like, yo, go get the ball. Right? And it's only like, it's a car, bro. <laughs> like, you know, it's just a thing. But that's like the mentality we have is we, we get, we take things so personal. You know what I'm saying? Like, our property, we take it like it's the most valuable thing to the world. And somebody makes a mistake against us. It's, it's not an ego. Like you said, it's nuts. It's, 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 it's a nuts mentality. And even with Nuraim man, I'm a brother of Allah, he was a known drunk, drunker. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what so the Sahaba said, what? Lord of the Lord, Allah, curse be upon you. And the Prophet said, don't curse him. We're ready to love Allah, Allah, and 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 yeah, why you come here, man? Get out of here! You're talking about sick. <laughs> like, yeah, that's mashing should be for sick hearts. If you don't let the, if you don't let the people who don't yeah, enjoy Trump, themselves man, in the mashing, where they don't go? Man. And you like even in the fit, in the hundred feet fit. You know, in order for you to be in this state of intoxication, is they break it down. Like your speech got to be slurred. You can't determine the ground from the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And you, Pass out like that. That's considered a state of intoxication. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Other than that, if a man take a shot, you still do this a lot because he's in a state of awareness. No, no, no. But we be like, nah, man, he took a shot. He can't come in. <laughs> <laughs>